Okay, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Very good. That's good. Okay. Um we are going to start session number two of of this first week. Um but I have a question. First, can you hear clearly my voice? Pueden escucharme bien, no como ayer que se escuchaba raro. Yes, teacher. I I okay. listen. Okay, good. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We are going to start with the topic that we have for today. So let me show you the document that you have in the group. You have the access uh, in the group to the information that we are developing in this session. Uh, ya les envié el link de acceso al documento. But let me... Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you have the access for the document in the group, so now you can see all the information that we have. But let me see. I don't know if it, I am having troubles with the sound because it's saying that I don't have a connection, but let's see. Okay, here we are. Let me share the screen because we're going to begin. Okay, we were talking about yesterday um, about the topic adverbs before adjectives. We were talking about what an adjective is, what is an adverb, and all of that things. But now we are going to change that topic and we are going to talk about conjunctions. Ahora vamos a hablar de las conjunciones. ¿Qué son las conjunciones? ¿Para qué nos sirven y cuáles son las conjunciones? So let me get started with the topic. Okay. We are going to develop topic number two. Conjunctions. So. What is a conjunction? That is the main part of this topic. What is a conjunction? It says that a conjunction is a part of a speech that is used to connect word phrases, clauses, or sentences. Conjunctions are considered to be invariable grammar particles and they may or may not stand between items they conjoin. Okay, las conjunctions son palabras, son parte de eh, estos grupos que nosotros conocemos en inglés como part of a speech, que son grupos selectos de palabras que utilizamos para hablar. What are the other groups or the other words that we have for the part of a speech? We have verb, we have noun, we have adjective, we have adverb, but now we have the conjunction. It says that they connect, ellos conectan, las conjunciones conectan palabras, frases, cláusulas o Oraciones. Estas conjunciones son consideradas invariables y pueden o no estar en medio de los eh, items o de las cosas que ellos están uniendo. Puede que sean en medio, puede que no. Ellos tienen su forma de ser. So, let's see the first thing that is the information that we have.
Okay, that is the base of this topic. The information that we have about the conjunction, that is the general information that we have. Then we have types of conjunction. We have different types as in the other groups of words. Tenemos diferentes tipos. There are several different types of conjunctions that do various jobs within sentence structure. And we have the subordinating, the coordinating, co relative conjunction. We can say that we have four different types. And we are going to just take a look about uh, the different type of conjunctions, but we are not going to enter in to the deep of that topic because it's going to be very, very uh, long and very hard because in that case it's something very extent. Tenemos, podemos decir que vamos a ver cuatro tipos diferentes de conjunciones, pero solo los vamos a mencionar porque es importante que tengamos esa información, pero no nos vamos a meter detalladamente en ellos, porque sería bastante, bastante largo. So, we have just the names of the conjunctions in this case. So, let me make like a list, a short list of the type of conjunctions. We have subordinating. That is the first one, subordinated conjunction. And it says that this conjunction join dependent clauses to independent clauses. Las subordinated conjunctions unen las cláusulas dependientes con las cláusulas independientes. We know that the dependent clauses are those that um, have a meaning by itself. And the independent clauses are those that uh, don't have a meaning alone. So they are just making the joining or um, they make one whole sentence. Then we have the coordinating conjunction. For the coordinating conjunction, it says that this conjunction uh, coordinates or join two or more sentences, many clauses, words, or other parts of a speech, which are uh, of the same syntax importance. Las conjunciones coordinadas unen dos o más frases, um, cláusulas importantes, palabras o algunas otras partes de lo que es el speech, de part of speech, que tiene la misma importancia sintáctica. Then we have number three, that is correlative conjunctions. And this one said these are conjunctions Correlative working in pairs to join phrases or words that carry equal inference within a sentence. Estas trabajan en parejas y eh, unen frases o palabras que tienen una importancia igual entre la oración. And the last one are the conjunctive adverbs. And this one, it says, these adverbs always connect one clause to another. 
and are used to show sequence, contrast, cause and effect, and other relationships. Estas últimas, las conjunctive adverbs, nos ayudan a conectar una cláusula con otra y se utiliza para mostrar secuencia, contraste, causa y efecto y otras relaciones. So, in that case, we are not going to talk about all of them, in, like, knowing all the information that we have about a day, this kind of conjunction, because it's going to be kind of hard and long. But it is necessary that we mention that we have four different types, because uh, in the future, you are going to see this topic again, and you are going to... Uh, learn more about them. So it is necessary that you, that you know that we have that kind of a conjunction. So in the case it is not like we are going to um, talk about all of them right now. Okay, now, it says, when people first learn to write, they usually begin with short, basic sentences. In this case, we are talking about all the languages, all the process that we have in our life. When we are writing for the first time, or we are Uh, learning how to write, we are going to use um, short sentences. But I have some examples because I need to explain more about this, uh, this part. And we are going to say, when people When people first learn to write, we are going to see what are the kind of sentence that we create. And this is not something bad. This is a part of the process. Cuando estamos aprendiendo a escribir, ya sea en español, en inglés o en cualquier otro idioma, siendo niños o siendo adultos, nos vamos más por eh, oraciones cortas y que tengan eh, como las cosas más básicas que nosotros queremos expresar. Veamos los ejemplos. We have the first one, and it says, My name is Ted. I am a boy, and also I like dogs. My name is Ted. I am a boy, I like dogs. Short sentences. Oraciones cortas con información importante. Primero, my name is Ted. Yo les estoy diciendo que mi nombre es Ted. And I am communicating something. Then, I am saying, I am a boy. You need to know that I am a girl or I am a boy. And in this case, if, if I use this sentence, you are going to know that I am a boy. And another thing is that I like dogs. I am telling you that I prefer dogs over cats. But they are short, simple sentences. And what we are going to do to change that, we are going to do the following things. One of the most important jobs the conjunctions do is to connect is to connect this short sentence so they sound more like this, more natural and interesting. Lo que la conjunción va a hacer 
O sea, la función que va a tener esta conjunction es unir esas tres frasecitas cortas en una sola oración que suene más natural y que obviamente sea mucho más interesante para el que la escucha. And we are going to change three short sentences to this one. I am a boy named... I am a boy named Ted, and I like dogs. We change the three sentences in one. Cambiamos las tres frases cortas en una sola. I am a boy named Ted. Soy un chico llamado Ted. ¿Y qué decimos ahí? Primero, que yo, o sea, mi nombre es Ted y que soy un chico. Lo mismo de las primeras dos oraciones. In this word, in, I don't like that color, wait, and, y, I like dogs, y me gustan los perros, esa es la conjunción, in, porque está uniendo mi oración, y la está haciendo una sola sin necesidad de cortarla. I am a boy named Ted and I like dogs. Esa es la función de las conjunciones. Unir estas frases pequeñas en una sola y que suene más natural. Because when we are talking in English, we are not going to say, I am, I am Elena, I am a teacher, I am a girl, I am a... It, it is going to sound weird. Because we are not going to talk like that every time. So I can say, I am a girl named Elena. I am a teacher and I like to read books, for example. Very, very simple. And we have the first use for the conjunction. Ahora ya vamos viendo por dónde va ese tema de las conjunciones, que ya sabemos que es más que todo para unir esa frase y que suene mucho más natural nuestras oraciones. So, we are going to see what are the rules or the uses that we are going to have for the conjunctions. ¿Cuáles son las reglas o los usos que le vamos a ir dando a estas conjunctions? We have the first one. And it says, conjunctions are for connecting past, actions, and ideas as well as nouns clauses and other part of a speech. Okay, we know that we are going to use the conjunctions to connect. But in this case, we are going to connect different things. Vamos a conectar pensamientos, acciones, ideas. También vamos a conectar nombres, cláusulas y otras partes del de diálogo. En este caso, para el speech. Otras palabras, ¿verdad? Las vamos a ir uniendo. Then, we have some examples. It says, Mary went to the supermarket and bought oranges. Mary, or, or Mary, fue al supermercado y, that is the conjunction, y compró naranjas. That is the connection between these uh, sentences. Because we can separate. Mary went to the supermarket is one, 
and about oranges is another sentence. But in this case, we don't want to separate them, and we are going to use a conjunction to connect the two short sentences into a one long sentence. Ya no necesitamos separarla, ya la tenemos las oraciones, y simplemente vamos a agregar una conjunción que me pueda permitir conectar esas dos ideas. Then, we have the second one. Conjunctions are useful for making lists. Son muy buenas para hacer listas. Examples. We have here, we made pancakes, eggs, and coffee for breakfast. We made pancakes, eggs, and coffee for breakfast. Again, we are using N. And in this case, maybe you are asking, but why we are just using N? Because we don't have the list yet for the conjunction. No estamos utilizando las otras conjunciones porque uh, no hemos creado la lista. Ya la vamos a ver. Ya vamos a llegar a esa parte para que ustedes vean todas las palabras que podemos utilizar como conjunciones. Pero en este caso, para los ejemplos, solo estamos utilizando N. Then we have the third one, and it says, when using conjunctions, make sure that all the parts of your sentence agree. Siempre tienen que fijarse que todas las partes de su oración concuerden. Si es plural, pues utilizamos las reglas para los plurales. Si son singulares, tenemos que fijarnos que todo vaya de acuerdo al singular. No vamos a poner algo singular para algo plural porque no va a concordar lo que estamos utilizando. And we have the example. It says, I work busily, yet I'm careful. I work busily, yet I'm careful. In this sentence, it is not like they are not agreeing eh, all the parts of the sentence. No están de acuerdo todas las partes de la oración y no se entiende. Sino que nosotros deberíamos de utilizar esta oración de esta manera. I work busily, yet carefully. And in this case, it's because we are using the adverbs. Estamos utilizando los adverbios. Tienen que concordar, porque si no, eh, no tendría sentido. And now, we are going to see what are the uh, conjunctions. Vamos a ver por fin cuál es la lista de conjunciones, cuáles son esas palabras. And something that I need to say, these words are 
people must come and use a uh, conjunction in American English. So, knowing that in American English, those are the most used uh, conjunctions, means that in other kind of English, we're going to have a lot of conjunctions more. En inglés de Estados Unidos, o en inglés estadounidense, que es el que comúnmente nosotros aprendemos, estos son los más comunes. Obviamente, en otros tipos de inglés, como el British, o eh, another kind of English, vamos a tener muchas más conjunciones, pero estos son los que nosotros utilizamos con más frecuencia. So, let's see. We have the first one. And, that is the word that we are using. Then we have as, because, but, for, just as, or, neither, nor, not only, Let me do it a little bit small because I don't know if... But in that case, you have this list in the document. You can um, see the list in the document because we are going to write some uh, words more. So... Then we have weather. And we have yet. So in this case, we have this list of words that we are going to use as a conjunction. And as because, but, or, just as, or, neither, nor, not only, so, whether, and yet. And we are going to see some examples with those words. For example, we have the first one. I tried to hit the nail, but hit my thumb instead. Traté de golpear la uña, pero me golpeé el dedo en su lugar. But, pero... In that case, is a conjunction. I try to hit the nail, but I, but hit my thumb instead. But in this case, this one. Next one. I have two goldfish and a cat. I have two goldfish and a cat. Tengo dos peces dorados y un gato. And in this case, it's a cat. I have Two goldfish and a cat. <coughs> Next one. I bought a new bag for my upcoming Compré una nueva cartera para mi eh, próximo viaje. I bought a new bag for my upcoming trip. Four. Then we have, you can have each ice cream or a brownie sundae. Mm -hmm. 
In this case is when we have two options. Cuando tenemos dos opciones. Puedes tener esto o esto otro. Peach ice cream or brownie. In this case, or. Neither the black dress nor the gray one looks right on me. Neither. Neither the black dress nor the gray In this case, it's like saying, ni el vestido negro ni el gris se ven bien en mí. Neither and nor. We have here both, we have two of these conjunctions. Neither nor. Then we have, my dad always worked hard. So, we could afford the things we wanted. In this case, my dad always worked hard. Mi padre siempre trabajó duro. Así que nosotros siempre pudimos tener las cosas que queríamos. So, así que. Then, I try very hard in school, yet I am not receiving good grades. I try very hard in school, yet I am not receiving good grades. In this case, yes. Trataba o trató muy duro, muy fuerte en la escuela o quiero hacer las cosas bien en la escuela. Aún no recibo buenos, eh, buenas notas. Estoy trabajando duro, pero aún no recibo buenas notas. Now. I'm going to write an exercise. Voy a escribirle su pequeño ejercicio. We have five sentences. Van a tener cinco oraciones con tres opciones. Five sentences with three options. And you are going to choose what is the best option for that sentence. And then I will give you some time to read the sentence and analyze what is the best option that you have for the sentence. And then we are going to say what is the correct answer. So let's see. My brother loves animals. He just loves a puppy.
and we have the option but or yet and We have options or but and yet. Number three. I want to go for a hike. I have to go to work today. Options, but yet or in four. Number four. They do not smoke. Do they play cards? And we have the option. N or nor and yes. And the last one, I'm going to, to move this one because I need to show you all the sentences. But give me a second. I'm getting good grades. I study every day. And we have the option. Or yet, but and because. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do it like this. And like this, and like this. Okay. Then we have the five uh, sentences. And I will give you a couple of minutes um, to think about the, the answer. And I know that it's pretty, pretty easy, but we need to, to read uh, the sentence and find the answer. So. I will give you two two minutes, and then we're going to see what is or what are the best options for this sentence.
Okay, I think it's time to see what are the answers. Let's see. For the first one, my brother loves animals. He just bought a puppy. What is the answer? And. And. Good. And. Good. Yes, of course. Katie, that's, that's nice. Okay. He just bought a puppy and a kitten with him. Mi hermano ama los animales y él trajo, ¿verdad? Un cachorro y un gatito a la casa con él. Number two. Katie doesn't like to swim. She does enjoy cycling. What is the answer? But. 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 Good. A ella no le gusta nadar, pero le gusta el ciclismo. That's good. Number three. I want to go for a hike. I have to go to work today. What is the answer? But. But. Good. Number four. They do not smoke. Do they play cards? What is the reception? Or. or nor nor good nor okay ellos no fuman ni juegan cartas nor do they play cards no fuman ni okay. juegan cartas good then we have, I'm getting good grades. I study every day. What is the answer? Because. Because. Good, because. Because, because. ¿Por qué? Estoy eh, teniendo buenas notas porque estudio todos los días. Good. So, that is the topic of uh, the conjunctions. We have a... Uh, list of words that we can use to join or to connect a sentences, a short sentence, and to transform those short sentences into a complete sentence with the information that we need to give to the others. And also, uh, we can... And we can use uh, this kind of words to complete the information that we want to say to the others and without using a lot of information because in this case, uh, we are not going to create long, long sentences, but we are going to use the conjunctions to connect that ideas that we have. Así que ese era el tema de las conjunctions. Es un tema no muy extenso. Es bastante corto porque sabemos que las conjunctions las vamos a utilizar para unir ideas, frases, oraciones y que suene más natural y que no suene como muy forzado a la hora de hablar en inglés. So, it's very, very short, but it is an uh, important topic that we have. And we need to have this information because we are going to use it in the future. We're going to begin or we are going to start with the other topic, but we are going to um, develop tomorrow. So we are going to see what is the other topic, and then we are going to continue with the topic tomorrow. Vamos a iniciar con este tema y lo vamos a terminar mañana. And the topic is, because in this case, uh, conjunctions is not like a very, very long topic. The other topic that we are going to develop is modal verbs. 
model birds. And in this case, we are going to focus on can and should. I know that maybe um, you can use can a lot because it's a very, very common word that we can use when we are talking in English. Because in Spanish, can is poder, but no power, it's poder hacer algo. So in that case, can is very, very familiar, or we are very familiar with that word. But in this case, we are not going to uh, know what are the model verbs and how can we use it when we are talking in English. Vamos a aprender sobre los model verbs, cómo lo vamos a utilizar, y no solo vamos a ver el can y el should. Vamos a ver otros, eh, otras palabras que se utilizan como model verb. The first thing is a model verb. Or a model is a type of auxiliary. And in this case, that can express, or we can use this, uh, these words to express ability, possibility, permission, or obligation. Bien, vamos a utilizar los modos para expresar habilidad, posibilidad, permiso o podemos utilizarlo para hablar de obligaciones. And we have a list of model verbs. And we have here the first one and they are can and could be able to. Can and could and be able to. Then we have may or might. Shall and should. Must and have to. And then we have will and will. So we have here this list of words that function as models, and we are going to see. In which cases we can use these models because they can use it for um, a specific things, for ability, for possibility, for permission, or for obligation. And also we are going to see some examples in which we can apply these uh, models to express something. For example, we can, could, and be able to that is the first uh, one that we are going to see. Tenemos para esta categoría, we are going to call it like that. We are going to use them to express a variety of ideas in English. Vamos a utilizarlo para expresar una variedad de ideas en inglés. And the first thing is ability or lack of ability. Lo vamos a utilizar para expresar habilidad o la falta de esta. Lack of ability. For example, well, the first one. But in this case, we have a structure. We are going to use can or cannot. 
Plus a base form. Plus, I mean, pl a base form of the verb. And in some cases, the complement. And we have the first example. Tom can write poetry very well. Tom puede escribir poesía bastante bien. Esa es una habilidad. So in that case, we are talking about ability. Second one. I can help you with that next week. And the third one, Lisa can speak French. So in that case, we have two abilities and one lack of ability. And the first one, some can write poetry very well is ability. Es una habilidad que él tiene, que puede desarrollar, que es escribir. Poesía. The second one, I can help you with that next week. Te puedo ayudar. Es una habilidad porque le voy a ayudar con algo, ya sea una manualidad, un trabajo, etc. Y la última es lack of ability porque no puede hacer algo. Lisa can speak French. No puede hablar en francés. So, eh, le falta esta habilidad de poder hablar en francés. In the case that we are going to use the verb to be, In all of these um, structures, we are going to use the, the verb to be because it's one of the most used verbs in English. We are going to have am, um, is, are, will be, plus able to. En este caso vamos a utilizar el able to, que es este de aquí, be able to. Vamos a utilizar el verbo to be con el able to con la forma base del verbo. So, we have am, um, is, are, plus, will be, plus, able to, plus, base form of the verb. And the last thing that we are going to say are the examples. Or if you are going to write this sentence in negative, we are going to have almost the same structure, but we are going to change something. In this case, we are going to add not. I am not, is not, are not, and in this case, want, be able to, and the base of form. So, let's see. Examples. We have in the one. question, teacher? In the question, in this case, mm, we are going to have it for tomorrow. But we can use it, in this case, be able to. But in this case, we are going to use the verb to be first. In that case. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. For the question is, is first the, the verb to be. Because we are not going to use um, auxiliary right now. So, in this case, we have the following example. Mike is able, Mike is able to solve complicated math equations. Mike es capaz de resolver 
Ecuaciones matemáticas complicadas. The super team will be able to help you in about 10 minutes. The support team will be able to help you in about 10 minutes. El, el grupo de soporte será capaz de ayudarte en aproximadamente 10 minutos. Y el último ejemplo, I won't be able. I won't be able to visit you next summer. No voy a ser capaz de visitarte el próximo verano porque voy a estar ocupado, voy a estar trabajando, or another thing. So we are going to continue with this topic tomorrow. So we are going to end the session here, and we are going to see each other tomorrow in session number three. Have a really good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good night, teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.